I want to talk about just the, uh, the the vibe and the feeling in Winnipeg right now um, with everything that's going on with the possible uh, move of the Atlanta Thrashers. Possible move, I say. But the first thing I wanted to uh, to ask you about is uh, the story in the Winnipeg Free Press today that, um, I mean, we've been kind of trumpeting that this is this transaction is kind of, uh, you know, a model of free enterprise of, you know, a group of owners sitting down and dealing with another group of owners. And I think Stephen Brunton and myself were commenting about how nice it was to see a deal actually get done without the government being involved. And then the free press today says that uh, True North Sports and Entertainment, um, which owns the MTS Center, is looking to the province to help it manage the debt load it carries in the downtown arena in order to free up money to help pay for the relocation of the team to Winnipeg. Now, I know that's not your bailiwick, but I, I, I mean... Are you at all concerned, given what's going on in Manitoba right now, with or going on with with the flooding and, and and you know that this is sort of not the best time to be asking the province for money? Well, put it this way: you have to remember that all three levels of government—the federal government, the provincial government, and the city of Winnipeg—put significant dollars in the construction of the uh, MTS center. That's just a fact, and that's how it got built. Uh, I've always said that this initiative is something that I would totally support to bring back the NHL. I don't think you'll find a better market in Canada. Southern Ontario is certainly uh, a great market, and that'll probably be for a new franchise. But for an existing, Winnipeg makes sense. You won't find more passionate fans. And I said it has to be private sector driven. So I still very much believe that. And I get and and private sector driven. I I mean. How would you define private sector driven? Uh, private sector driven would be you negotiate uh, to purchase an asset from someone who wants to sell and you want to buy whatever the price is, you pay for it and you bring it here. And God willing, you are a very profitable uh, business and you get great support from the fans and the corporate community. That to me is private sector driven. Sam Cates, mayor of Winnipeg, joins us on Sportsnet Radio, the Fan 590. You know, uh, we've talked a lot in this show and other shows about Winnipeg's approach to getting and uh, possibly getting an NHL team and comparing it to, you know, for example, what went on in the city that I that I now live in, Hamilton, uh, where the city was, um, you know, the city government was was really out there. There were, you know, ticket season ticket equivalencies sold. Um, it was really out in the open. I mean, you guys have you yourself, uh, the city, the province, and uh, and indeed the True North Group. I mean, this has been, I guess, the model way to get stuff done. And I, you know, are you surprised even at this stage that you've been able to keep as much under wraps as you and and uh, and and the True North people have? Like, it just seems to me that you've done exactly what you need to do to get an NHL team. Listen, I think we all watch very closely what happened with Mr. Paul Silly. And uh, from my point of view, all I learned is that when, you know, egos are at the table, you know, not always the most astute decision is made. But the bottom line is it's unfortunate for Hamilton it didn't happen. In this situation, I think everybody has attempted to do the best thing, keep their mouth shut. That goes for True North. That goes for the province. That goes for the city. About three weeks ago, I did go on the record and say that I don't believe for a moment that the Phoenix Coyotes are coming back to Winnipeg. I think we're being used as as leverage, which I think is unfortunate, but it happens. But I did believe there would be an open and objective uh, approach when it came to the Atlanta Thrashers, and I think that's exactly what is happening. Mayor Cates, tell us a little bit about the economy of Winnipeg because, you know, anybody who's lived there, and, and I get tired of telling people that, I mean, it, it's a, to me, it's a stable province. The economy's stable. The city's stable. There's, there's you know, old money in the city. There's new money in the city. Like, I think people have a really, real bad and, and, and an improper um, idea of what Winnipeg's economy is about. Uh, is there any doubt in your mind that you could support an NHL team? No, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. And I think, you know, you kind of nailed it. What Winnipeg has is old and new money. But a lot of people in Winnipeg, basically extremely wealthy, extremely successful, worked hard. They like to be low-key and fly under the radar. And that's what you have a lot of here. But when it comes to supporting these types of organizations, I can assure you they will 
stand tall and be there. I mean, they've already done a, uh, an analysis of the existing suite holders and what would happen if the price had to be tripled, what kind of support there would be. The support was absolutely phenomenal. Sam Cates, mayor of Winnipeg, joins us on Sportsnet Radio, the Fan 590. Have you had to manage expectations in the last two weeks? Like you've got to be inundated with phone calls, interview requests, I, I mean, even just people in the street. Um, have you had to, you or the True North people, had to manage expectations at all? Well, I think everybody did, and it was even worse. I mean, there were rumors on the street there was going to be an announcement two Fridays ago announcing the Coyotes coming or and that's when I finally said, okay, enough of this. It's got to stop because you don't want to build up expectations because that's happened too many times. So has that taken place? Everybody's been inundated, and that's why I spoke out about three weeks ago and said, you guys, there is no planned rallying announcement at Portage and Maine. The Coyotes are not coming here. Do not bank on it. But there are other NHL franchises, and obviously Atlanta Thrashers was one. And you guys know as well as me. There's a lot of other NHL franchises that are losing significant money every year. Sam, do you have a preference as to what, as a fan, do you have a preference as to what the team should be called? Because to me, it's got to be called the Jets. You know, you're asking me my personal opinion, and I, listen, I I was there with the uh, with the world, you know, the WHA, Bobby Hull and Anders and and the gang, and and I was there with. Uh, with the Jets for all those years, and my personal opinion is, yeah, Winnipeg Jets, I love the name. Bottom line is, I'll support an NHL team in here, period. End of story. Uh, before we let you run, uh, Mayor Cates, I wanted to ask you, do you have any idea what time frame we are looking at? The ballpark. No, I don't believe that's, that's not the political, uh, you know, mayors and premiers should not be getting involved with that. That is totally up to the private sector. True North, and whoever they're negotiating with regarding the Atlanta Thrashers, when a deal is consummated and approved by the league, they'll make an announcement, whether it's one week, two weeks, three weeks. We all know that time is of the essence because schedules are being made, et cetera, et cetera. But you certainly would like to see something happen before, you know, the, uh, the NHL playoffs are over. There's no doubt that would be an ideal situation. That's up to the private sector and the NHL not elected officials. Would you do something at Portage in Maine when that happens? Because <laughs> that is, you know, for people who don't know, that is, that. well, the Forks is pretty symbolic, but I think for Winnipeggers of a, of a certain age, uh, myself included, there, Portage in Maine is pretty significant. I was there when Bobby Hall signed the contract. You know, it means a lot to me. I want to talk about just the uh, the... the-